The Avon descent is never a walkover, but when the way downstream looks more like a road than a river, footwork will be just as handy as flotation. It's a special year for the West Australian Whitewater Classic, the 40th anniversary, and the weather records made history too. It's been the driest ever month leading into the race. Another suffer fest for sure, but the paddlers and powerboats still find a smile as they get set to take on the many moods of their favourite valley. After 40 descents, the Abbott is still going strong, and there are plenty of veterans who have seen most of those years. Once again, the talk on the riverbank is about water levels and the teasing nature of an erratic winter that at one stage looked like leaving this event out in the cold. And the water's come up a bit, so it's going to be a real good, fun, challenging level. Uh, a little bit of walking, but um, stoked to have a race on. Where would I be if this were to go under they're getting ready in the dark and the rain everyone was praying for is another last minute blessing. Rain on a race morning is unheard of so it's got to be a little bit of a lucky charm maybe, huh? Everybody says how low the water is and things like this. Well, this is the Avon descent. And if there's no water in it, it's still the Avon descent. Boat breaking conditions have forced officials to shorten the course for power crews. Some of the difficulty might be out of the way, but not the danger. It's more important to get all the, the little things right and, um, yeah, not, don't do anything too spectacular. It's certainly a raceable level, but very challenging. Right on sunrise, the atmosphere changes. And the powerboats burn up the river. As the propeller wash fades, the paddlers dig in. Those who take on this race say there is no tougher in the world. The 40th year proving a magnet for some of the top endurance paddlers on the planet. The Aussies under siege from the UK, America, Germany, Canada and the fearsome South African contingent. I'd say this is off the Richter scale. It's over fields, it's through trees, it's through woods, it's over rapids. It's not just a straight run down the river. It's the camaraderie and... Uh being there and testing yourself against uh, all the Aussies and, and all our countrymen back home in South Africa, you know. And while all the river isn't running, first up it's a kayaking cross country. who know the ropes of a dry year are already towing their way through the crowd. Just minutes along from the start, the Avon looks more like a cratered maze than a river. But eventually, some relief. The stream widens and as spirits lift, it's time for comradeship among the competition. Thanks, mate. No worries. Good on you. Appreciate it. Further downstream, the rest of the power fleet gears up for a start. Deeper water giving the crews and first timers the best chance of making it through day one. So I haven't raced it for nine years now, been overseas, so just come back and uh, gonna go have a blast, have a good time. 
some of the novices tackling this year's event are relying on those who know only too well what this river can dish up. John, it's been a touch and go year. What made you decide to go ahead with the challenge? Well, Claire, uh, as you know, I was uh, having this year off and uh, with my daughter and uh, I heard that you wanted to go down and uh, I thought, uh, from my experience, I'd probably be one of the safest people to take you down. So let's go. Let's go. The dog days are from the Canadian Rockies, Brandon Skipper and Shannon Cupper, two hard men who know they'll need all their strength to beat the West Australian wilderness. But I think uh, when it comes down to running with the boat and everything, I think it's going to come up to fitness and uh, it's going to be good. <laughs> we'll put up a good fight. And from across the Nullarbor, another challenge from a South Australian duo. Here you're going over rapids and rocks and things like that, it's things that we just have nothing like. <laughs> you approach them too hard, you could end up over the front or approach them too slow and you'd be dragging the boat. With nerves on edge and adrenaline running high, all the power crews are now away. But the quiet flat water is only a brief reprieve from the ragged riverbed just ahead. Next on the Avon, rapid descent as paddlers hit the first white water. And a rock wall slows the race to a crawl. In a river like this, those who have the power can delay some of the pain. Skimming the shallows at nearly 70 k's an hour. But top speed comes at a price in water only a few centimetres deep. The descent record holders flipping just minutes in, and even the fastest contenders can't avoid the bare rocks of Glen Avon Rapids. It's not going to be the quickest boat, it's going to be the smartest boat. And there's no reward to those who try shooting through. When it's high, there's things that might upset you, but this is just going to be a bone cruncher. recovery teams from the 120 strong Avon support unit target every danger point. Crews on alert as the rapids carve through the field. Just over 10 k's into day one, the top paddle crews have sprinted away. It's so far so good for the Aussies. Simon Roll and Kevin White first to Glen Avon. Just. They opt to run round the rocks, but hot on their heels. Reigning champion Hank McGregor's leading the South African charge. It's pretty rough. Um, you know, you're just paddling and next minute you're just beached and uh, lots of rocks. While some get stuck with a straight approach. Descent veterans are playing it safe. I think I'd better run, 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 run. I think I'd better run, 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 run. It's pretty much like uh, 2010s level, so I think you'll be have to look sharp on the on the lower sections. But just down river, Dumbarton Causeway's running well enough to smooth things over. How you want it to be? Sitting by the waterfall. The 
Canadians are still coming to terms with the Down Under Dash and the South Aussies, more used to the gentle expanses of the mighty Murray, are pulling out all the stops. Amazing. One of the uh, very different experiences for both of us, I think. Some can't avoid a collision course with the Avon. And one unlucky power boaters out of the race with a dislocated knee. That's right, down the boat, down the boat. And those managing to stay off the bottom get up to top speed once... But all too soon, day one's tallest order, the back-breaking rock wall of Extracts Weir. Any way they tackle it this year is hard labour. Seems the Murray men are out to catch every stone they can. We were coming into it really cautious and then the helmet went on and yeah. it was just like, now nah, we just, After we got it, the second we got it. And we just thought, let's keep going. <laughs> Maybe it's their Rockies upbringing, but the boys from British Columbia take the Boulder avalanche in their stride. It was really fun. It's challenging. We don't know where we're at, so that's, uh, but you know what, just to be here and doing it is just great. By now, the South Africans have edged to the fore, and though the rain's pelting, the paddle battles a dry argument as teams take to the riverbank. Looking good, mate. Yeah, getting there. Each of the 800 entrants needs up to half a dozen support crew, especially the Queensland paracanoeists tackling their first descent. And the husband and wife team from Texas toughs it out with a smile. With low water, competitors have the option of finishing day one early, lopping more than 10 kilometres off the full course. Switching from paddle to power after 14 years hasn't paid off for one crew out with a dead engine. We've lost 51, so it's the old midlife crisis, so I think he still do it. He's got a metal knee, so he's... <laughs> but this is hard. <laughs> yeah, but they said it was going to be, so we were born. Yeah. Normally at home watching it. <laughs> and that's probably the best spot. <laughs> also bowing out, first time it's Aaron Lawrence and Madison Grigg. Yeah, just hit everything. I think you miss it and you get the next one, so... But through it all, 46 make it through. The river claiming just five power boats on day one. Oh, we'll be back, definitely. Hopefully there's more water next year. Make it more fun. <laughs> Coming up, from white water to wipeouts, as boat crews go bush bashing in the lost world of the Avon Valley. Keeping mentally healthy is just as important as staying physically healthy. And it's as easy as ABC. Act, belong, commit. Act. Keep physically and mentally active. Belong. Keep up friendships, join in club and community events. Commit. Support a good cause. And help others. Keeping mentally healthy helps you cope better with problems and stress. You'll simply feel happier too. To find out more, visit this website or call the number. Following a river shouldn't be a navigator's challenge, but there is a place here to get lost. The changeable world of the tea trees can be a cruel place. Those who have been here before know holding back is not an option. Flying through the web of channels just wide enough. Hey. 
It's a battle through teasing trees many of us can't avoid. Even the experienced get bushwhacked. Back on track, the quickest through the trees, defending champions Ian and Todd Williamson. And it's enough to give them the lead on day one. Let's do that again. That was a blast. Had a few um, crashes, but they're all OK. Mate Scott Goodbody and Justin Green scream through just two minutes behind. <laughs> right on. Oh, mate, it was a heat. Nice, good race level it was. Legendary hard charges Jay Branson and Byron Jane's teamwork also paying off. They're in third. Yeah, we had a real big nearly in the trees. Yeah. Come real close to flipping, eh? And both of us just got together and saved it, thank God. <laughs> it was awesome fun, though, wasn't it? Though not challenging the leaders, most of the remaining power fleet managed to make it through. Fantastic. We loved it. Um, the tea trees were really tough. We did them a little bit hard today, but we got through, so we're really happy to be at the finish line. You've just got to follow where the water's moving and, and hopefully you get through and we got through, which is fantastic. As power crews begin to wind down and check for damage, the paddlers are still pushing through the pain. Every ounce of energy counts, mistakes are costly and the maze can last for hours for some. Oh, oh. And with countless stretches of shallow water, paddlers have to keep powering through, in and out of the boat. First to find the line at the end of day one, last year's champion Hank McGregor and new teammate Grant Vanderwalt in a double kayak. Our prayers were answered, there was a little bit of rain and uh, the water came up a little bit, so just made it a little bit easier for us. Local hope Simon Roll and Kevin White bringing it in for the Aussies. I think we had a few darker moments along the way where you don't feel 100%, but then you paddle through. I, I think the conditions were, were fa very favourable today and I, I think the guys further back will have a much better day than I think they thought they would have. <laughs> Another dominant pair, Hilary Pitchford and Abigail Aidy, bolstered the South African charge. We're just going to have to try and make as few mistakes as possible, be as quick as we can and yeah, just hopefully get through the valley in one piece. I'm pretty surprised. I paddled strongly for the first part of the race, but I feel like a dead man for part of the rest. Yeah, good. It was lots of fun. Hard, bit shallow in spots, but it was, it was great. I had a good time. <laughs> Making it through day one, Queensland amputee Glenn Pine and his paracanoist teammate Brock Ingram. Once we got up on the straight stretches, we are going good. It was just the shallow stuff. After a long day on the river, crews get their bodies and boats ready for round two. It's apparently a little tear, but nothing to worry about. No. But I mean, I've dropped out of the race, I didn't want to hurt it anymore. The pain tempered by team spirit for the 35 strong firefighter contingent. It gets into your skin like, you know, the first time I did it, you know, I think I finished and said, I'm never ever doing that again. And I think every year straight away I finish, I think, oh, that's the last time I'm doing it. And yet I just keep coming back. And like any of these annual assaults, they're often fueled by family pride. We're in different classes, but it's always good to beat the other one. <laughs> as long as we finish. And it's been that way since day one. The year 1973. Susie Quattro, the Leyland P76, and the birth of the Avon Descent. We were amateurs at this game. We didn't know the first thing about it. This rare film, broadcast for the first time in nearly 40 years, captures the start line on the first day 
the very first Avon descent. The official starter, 93-year-old Northern legend Izzy Cohen. As a teenager, he navigated his way down the river over four days in the 1890s. We waved them away at the Northern Weir and then went home and had breakfast and packed the car. The first boat came up and sort of yelled out, where's the finish line? And we said, oh, this will do. Right from the beginning, when the uh, queries started coming in that we had a winner on our hand, but I never expected this. Jim Payne organised the first race simply to promote the town of Northam after his mate Jerry Post did a test run the year before. All of a sudden John Izzard appears and he said, come on, he said, we're going down the, down the river. I said, I'm working. None of us knew what to expect. In fact, um, we weren't told anything. To the land of the bloody Among the 63 crews that year, there was just one woman. Sally Suber joining SAS soldiers to battle never before raced rapids. So I told the boys, I said, when we got there, I said, please don't go down. I said, shut up, Sally. Oh, that was a uh, propeller and gearbox that was picked up in the, out of the river in summer of 74. So obviously it was part of the 73 event. <laughs> I often ask myself why I, how come I'm still here 40 years later, but. I think it's the excitement of the event, uh, that watching it grow. The Avon descent started on nothing, not a halfpenny, and yet it grew to be one of the largest sporting events in Australia. Am I happy? Yeah. I'm very proud. Back at the overnight camp, there's warmth beyond the bonfires. Friendship strengthened through years of competition. Pretty sure everyone would agree that actually challenged and got in the water today that it's uh, it's enjoyable no matter what level it is. We just, you know, get on the water tomorrow and there's no pressure. Pass boats, just have a good time and enjoy the river. Happiness that the first day is over and a bit of calming the nerves for the second day. Ahead on the Abbott. Day two drama starts early down river and Emu Falls gives racers the runaround. The moon's still high, but already there's movement deep in the Avon Valley. No time left for dreaming as the cold reality of descent day two dawns on weary crews making last minute repairs. Though yesterday was better than expected, more than 120 paddlers are out and the race record holder predicts more will follow soon. Today's could be make or break for so many people. There'll still be a lot of getting out and running and that because there's just so little water. One big mistake and uh, you can lose minutes here, so the race isn't over till, uh, till that uh, last little jetty there at uh, Bayswater. The 2011 champion bracing for a rocky morning, but still ready to roll. Through the valley it's going to be pretty tricky and uh, there's no water, so I think we're more like survival mode. As game as anyone on this river, the amputee team is most at risk from the final 72k slog. It's one more challenge and one more thing to do. and. Uh, I don't know, I feel like I could kick a bucket now, but it's something to tick off the bucket list. And suddenly, a perfect reminder of what part of the world we're in. After the final tea tree fight, the leaders power into the first of the valley's serious challenges, the twin turns of the super shoot. 
For the main contenders, it's double kayak or nothing in the 40th descent. Their category attracting the top money prize, a cool $15,000 up for grab. You know, it's always good being up there and, uh, you know, just you never know where you're going to end up. But, uh, you know, at the start, you're always, always positive, always uh, looking for a good race. What, uh, what drives the sport. And as the river bends, so do boats. Testing crew's capacity to bounce back. The Americans are still smiling, and for once they've found something bigger than Texas. It's really scary <laughs> trying to get the tandem through some of these tight rapids. It's much bigger rapids. Yeah. We have very, very small rapids in, in Texas. Texas. But the steepest part of the Avon Valley has never been so quiet on day two. For the first time, the hills aren't alive with the roar of outboards. During a good winter, this is the place for the ultimate test. And down the years, it's broken more than a few hearts and hulls. It's totally different because we don't get, we're going a lot, lot faster and you've got big waves to attend with, so they can flip you over. So again, it's a different skill set for, uh, for higher water. For now, the Padlet carry the challenge alone at Emu Falls. And once again, the valley will do no favours. First time it's relying on experienced teammates to get them through safely. And through the valley, I think he's got a uh, fair bit of knowledge down the valley, so I've got a lot of faith in that. And old hands know when the river's winning, it's no time to lose your sense of humour. But it's a mean year at Emus, and dozens opt for a foot race across the boulders. An especially tough battle for the para canoeists. But they're determined the fickle conditions are no handicap. Everyone's got to put up with it, so, yep. so do we. And the spirit that's carried this race throughout the years was born early. A land of drought and flooding rain. The Avon's been a river of beauty and terror. I reckon that no one would be silly enough to do the, the, the race once, let alone some people who do it every year, you know. 1974 and a second descent was a monster. A river in flood surged through the valley. The giant returned in 83 and Darrell Long set a solo time that stood unchallenged for 25 years. The conditions it was set in, um, the water was high enough that if it had tried to hold the race three days before, um, they couldn't have done it because all the roads were underwater. Aside from year one, race director Jim Smith's been a vital part of the Avon descent. Jim was like a member, I think we had about five rules uh, for competitors to follow. Uh, there was very few regulations. There was no prize money because there was no money, you know, and, and uh, everybody just did it for the fun. It's always been a weekend out for larrikins, as well as more rapid types trying to read the river's many moods. 
From the raging highs of 2008, just two years later, barely a trickle. The committee and um, have a low water contingency plan. Don't leave me dry. In between is ideal, with competitor safety always paramount. But there's been one dark chapter in the Avon story, the death of a young paddler in the surging waters at Catrine Bridge 21 years ago. It really brought home to everyone just the incredible risks involved and that things, things can go wrong and they can go wrong incredibly quickly um, and sometimes for reasons completely beyond your control. Coming up, close calls as more trouble looms in the dash down the valley and bent out of shape, the best Aussie hope out of contention. No, they can't stop raiding us. Running smoothly, the turbocharged top paddlers are conquering the valley quicker than anyone imagined. The leading three neck and neck. But in a trice, the Avon bites back. Aussie team Simon Roll and Kevin White dragged into mayhem. Just a soul's remaining. And we just made a, a, a technical error and before we knew it the boat was wrapped around a rock. And yeah, I, th I think we were both ready to walk up to the road. Within seconds, an all-out struggle. Tons of pressure, too much for the hull. A split second error can uh, cost you an entire race and sometimes can cost your life, so it, it really is scary. That's river paddling. You know, so unfortunate, but part of the game. As the paddlers for John, further downstream, power crews are on edge, keen to start their day two descent. It's actually going to be a fun run today. Be short and sweet, maybe an hour or so, and it's going to be a hoop. Looking forward to it. With much of the shallow valley removed from their final challenge, everyone has to adopt new tactics. So we'll just run everything as clean and as smoothly as we can, and uh, then on the flat water, just put on a fast propeller. The other guys behind us, Jay and uh, Scott Goodbody, they're going to be right on our hammer and, and going for the win as well. I'm obviously try and push through and hopefully make up the ground we need to make up. But the unpredictable nature of the race is especially hard to fathom this year. The river's up a little bit, so hopefully it's just wide open all the way to the end and no surprises. John, we had a great day yesterday. What can we expect today? Yeah, we certainly did, Claire. Uh, today, a little bit different. Uh, we've got uh, probably a good half an hour of hard work dra dragging over rocks, especially down at uh, Bell's Rapids. And after that, we get to a, a stretch of tea trees, which uh, I've been told there's plenty of water in there. We get past those, and then we're on the homeward run. As they hit the water, the Avon's unique mix of power and paddle becomes another hazard, with near misses putting competitors on edge. With aching legs, more stone-hard challenges are a tough initiation. Okay, With rapids barely rising among the trees, picking the wrong path just makes it worse. Rocks. That's all, just rocks. And that's what the Avon's about. You lift over rocks, you get going in, hit a few more, lift over more and just keep cracking on. The three in a row is always in the back of your mind, but you've got to leave it there. You've got to, you've got to do business as usual and not, not let it cloud your mind. It's been a long time, but now it's barely The top athletes in the K2s have surprised everyone, ploughing through to reach the daunting Bells Rapid before the Powerys. With no Aussies in sight, Daryl Bartho and Grant Wollaston are first to line it up, chasing down a seven-minute deficit from day one. We want some machine in the back there pulling us around, you know, and that was the main thing, you know, to conserve energy, get through without getting stuck too many times or falling out. I was looking over my shoulder the whole time because of the power boats. I mean, uh... I was just wishing they could just give us a tow rope there and we could hang on the back and water ski to the finish. Over and over and over and over. Like a monkey with a miniature 
And despite the evolution of technology and training, the philosophy behind this marathon has never changed. He's going the distance. He's going for speed. Thousands have tested themselves against each other, but they know it's always a race against the river. Racing and racing and plotting the course. And every year, they're back for more. In the early days when I was racing, it was two guys and Dad's fishing dinghy, put it on the river and go, and that was it. These days, Ian Williamson races with son Todd in a high-tech river rocket. In the Their personal best, just over two hours, a record yet to be broken. If it stands forever, great. If it gets taken out this year, then that's just the way it goes. He was in a boat ever since he could walk, and he just has that edge, and he can read the river. He's a far better driver than either was, and that's why we're getting good places. Ian's 33 years in the event are pipped by power veteran Russell Wilson, who's done it four times more. Paddler Russell Wright, the only other competitor to match the milestone. I'll make the 40. <laughs> a, good, a good round number and then uh, finish at 40, I think. The fastest paddle craft ever recorded in this race was a double surf ski. Darren Pratt and Tim Bird making the most of the flood of 96. I get a couple of strokes in and Tim isn't, isn't paddling. And I look around and the big guys, he dislocated his shoulder and was uh, just popping it back in. It took about maybe 20 minutes for it to sort of uh, start to roll well again and then by that stage pain wasn't a problem. Over the past decade, international paddlers have made their mark. South Africa leading the charge. Locals though are still a fighting force. Brendan Sarson claiming the solo paddling record in 2008, among the many somehow finding ways to forget the pain and keep the Avon legend alive. Every year I say I'm never doing this race again and then it comes around to the following year and I go, oh yeah, I think I'll do it again. So there's just something about it. Next on the Avon, power play as Bell's Rapid takes its toll and paddle pain in the long push to the line. It's called Bells, and its form rings true every year. It's a devil of a place. Whichever way you approach it, one hell of a bumpy ride. They want to get my gold on the ceiling. I ain't mine, just a matter of... Giving it everything, the Williamsons are the first of the Powerys to stool through. But Scott Goodbody and Justin Green are putting the pressure on. Put the bottom the last ride, we um, just went into a shallow chute, had no steerage and hit a big rock, hit the boat, I, I hurt my thumb and threw the old man out the front for about the fourth time this weekend. Wreaking havoc on the rest of the fleet, boats flying in every direction. The boys from Canada caught up in the carnage. There was just one little area we could get through and the boat just stood straight up in the air and water went in the engine. That's where we drove bells, pretty much all of us drove bells. I expect it to be worse than that actually. After hours in the valley, it's now time for the remaining paddlers to set up their last whitewater showdown. The level today was very, very tricky with the rocks. They just sort of um, pushed us off course. So it really is a hard thing to survive under those conditions. And still.
still more obstacles as they descend to the final stretch of open water. After the last of the tea trees and as headwinds pick up on the flat, 30 k's of what seems like an endless slog plays on everyone's mind. I can't stop. A heart-pumping sprint to the finish for the three leading power boats. But the class of father and son team Ian and Todd Williamson is unmatchable. Todd and Ian Williamson, and they win again again. Continuing their winning form, taking line honours for the third year in a row. And there was three of us all coming into Bells and it was a real hard race to get in. Very stressful, but we just snuck in, so great fun. A few tactics involved and uh, some quick boats to beat, and uh, it was just a, a satisfying win. Challenging the lead right to the end. Top performers Scott Goodbody and Justin Green saw through. Generous runners up once again. I'm behind them for the third year in a row, you're getting pretty sick of it, but <laughs> can only keep trying. A list of mania. Think less, but see it grow. Like a ride, like a ride, oh, not easily offended, not hard to let it go, from a mess to the masses. With the top power boats now safe on the sand, last year's King of the River South African Hank McGregor charges over the line with teammate Grant Vanderwalt. Well, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for one of the legends of the sport, Hank McGregor, and his partner for the first time in the set, Grant Vanderwalt from South Africa. Yeah, we decided to put the hammer down just before the end and managed to uh, to take the end sprint as well as the title. We did take a swim and uh, Daryl and them got away from us. So we just kept our cool. And we went out there with a goal to, to catch up and get on the podium and uh, it's always nice achieving it, you know. The first Aussies, West Australian pair Lockie Cook and Matt Coots. And no one's more relieved to make it. So stoked, so stoked. There's so many awesome people supporting us here. You know, probably a bit more experience and get up there. But the South African dominance continues. Hilary Pitchford and Abigail Aidy, the number one female duo. For Hilary, two in a row. And to Abby drove like an absolute star. For never seeing the valley, I mean, jeepers. She's wanting to look out for to come back and win this race. And for those who have tackled the valley solo, finish line glory for David Worthy and Claire Duncan. The men from the Murray River make it all the way too. The Canadians join in the club as well. Thanks a lot. Thank you. John Goodbody and Claire Grafton, well done. Oh, thank you. Well done. Well done. Well, done. well, we've made it to Bayswater. It was an absolutely clean run today, wasn't it? Yeah. Fantastic run. And uh, I must say, uh, Bell's Rapids was a little bit unusual for me because I haven't done it in, long, in low water for a long time. So together we did it really well. What they're doing is, is tough, it's, it's rough, it's, you know, it's unpredictable, so it's, it's just one hell of a ride. For 40 times now, the same smiles of relief as the young hard chargers and the living legends of this event produce another classic contest on the Avon. Yeah, I think that's why it's lasted so long and hopefully it lasts another 40 years. It's always good fun. It's the Avon Descent. Is it anything, anything other than a lot of fun? It's just an epic event, great time and I encourage all the young people out there to just give it a real hell crack. You know, it's a, it's a sport that you can do for your whole life and... Um, it's given me so much joy. <laughs>